Hey, it's Long with a Screencast Quick Tip. I got an email from one of our members, Todd Doyle, the other day. He loves the new newsletter. Thanks, Todd. And he has what he thinks is a crappy sample and a problem for us to look at. He wants a nice, crisp banner overlay at the bottom of his videos. I assume what he means by that is something called a lower third. Let's take a quick look. Okay, now it looks like Todd has this banner at the bottom throughout the video. And yes, this is called a lower third because it's an extra component added to the video that stays visible over multiple scenes or shots in the lower third of the viewable area. Hence the very clever name. Clearly, in this case, it's there for branding or maybe copy protection purposes. We'll have more on that in a minute. But the overall problem here, I think, is that to me it looks, well, kind of amateur-like for two reasons. Number one, the solid white rectangle background gives a very hard edge to the thing, and the green gradient text with the orangish stroke seems rather cheap and cheesy looking to me. And it also doesn't match the color scheme of the video in any way, shape, or form. So it sticks out. So let's take a look at a couple of options to decrapify this a bit. Todd's video is a quick review of Michael Rasmussen's excellent Get More Buyers product. In Camtasia Studio, I've recorded a short clip of Michael's site to kind of simulate what Todd's doing and dropped it into the timeline. This gives us a clean slate to work with and we'll see if we can't come up with something a little better looking. First, the simple and quick approach. We can use Camtasia callouts to create a lower third box. The most common callout for this type of purpose is the rounded rectangle. If we go with just a white solid with black text, we'll end up with that blocky, kind of amateur looking feel. So let's see what we have in the way of parameters to play with to get a little more unique and snazzy look. The first is color. Play around with a few different choices and see if you can do anything that integrates with the overall design of the footage. In this example where Michael has obviously had some professional graphics work done, see if you can leverage this talented designer's use of the color palette and be complementary as opposed to the sore thumb approach. Lime green and orange are probably not colors the graphic artist would choose to use on this page. Ew. In this case, white may indeed work, but also a blue shade is appropriate, something that doesn't distract too much and blends in a bit. If I go with a darker color, I'll also need to change the text color. And a quick note on the text itself here. If the goal is to have someone see this URL and then type it into a browser for some extra traffic to the site, then I'd make the text a bit more rememberable. And by that I mean I want someone to be able to, with just a glance, clearly and quickly understand exactly what it says so they can type it in correctly. Your URL is actually three words that need to be processed in the brain. Wiz, Kid, Secrets. I think I'd use a capital letter to begin each word so that the viewer will go, oh yeah, WizKidSecrets.com. The way it is now, with all lowercase in the middle, it's harder to make out exactly what the address is. Wiz Kids Ecrets? What's an ecret? Believe me, viewers will rarely work that hard. And next, I'd like to get away from that hard edge look. One way to do that is by using transparency which is determined by the opacity setting. By bringing this down just a bit until the underlying video shows through a little, it creates a more interesting visual effect and just seems a little more professional than a big block of solid. 
Let's play that. Okay, so that's cleaner and a bit more professional and interesting, but I mean, let's face it, a graphics editor Camtasia is not. If we want to jump into the killer Camtasia category, we'll need to use something with a little more horsepower. Of course, Photoshop from Adobe is the power tool of choice here, but at 700 bucks a pop and a learning curve to match, let's look at a free graphics tool called GIMP. I'll cover this program in a lot more detail in some other videos and give you some great resources on how to use this. So just bear with me here and I'll show you just the quick and dirty possibilities. Here I've opened up GIMP, which you can get for free by clicking the link in the description or resource box. When I'm making a lower third, I want to make sure that it's the right size for the video I'm making, so here's a quick trick to get us started. Back in Camtasia Studio, I'm going to go to File, Produce Video As. You can use the presets or whatever custom settings you want, but make sure to verify the size you want your final video to be. And then just preview the current settings. And when that's finished, it'll launch a browser window with the video inside. This is obviously the size our video will be, and I'm going to resize this browser window to include just the video contents, and switch back to GIMP. Now I can go to File, Create, Screenshot, choose Grab a Single Window, and Grab. We'll just drag the little crosshair to the browser window with our video, and GIMP pulls it into the program. The reason I'm doing this is to create a properly sized image to use as a guide to make our lower third image. So I'm going to click on the Crop tool, click and drag to select just the video part of the image, Hit enter to crop it, and there we go. A real-world, properly sized canvas to draw a cool new lower third on that lets us see what it will look like. Here's the background layer of the video image, and if I make it invisible by clicking the little eye here, there's nothing but transparency underneath. Perfect. Now let's create a lower third. At this point, your imagination is your only limitation, but let me show you a few easy tricks. First, let's pick a color with the Color Picker tool. And the other reason I like to use this screenshot method is that for a video like this, where there's some really good graphics design work already done, I can easily pick a complementary color with this little tool. Now the real power of using an application like this has to do with layers. From the Layers window, I'll create a new layer, and with that layer selected, let's take the Rectangle tool and just draw out a box for our lower third at the bottom. To fill this in with the complementary color we picked, instead of making it a solid, which looks blocky, remember, I'm going to use the Gradient tool and choose Foreground to Transparent. I'm also going to set the offset to about 40 so it's a little darker. And then click and hold from the left side, drag it about three quarters of the way across, and let go. And there's our shape layer. For the text part, I think I'll grab another complementary color here with the color picker. We could use white, but this will blend in a little bit more and not be quite so glaring. And then the text tool, and just type in our lower third message. Choose whatever fonts or typeset you want. Get it into position where I want. And now, watch in stunned amazement as my hands never leave my arms, when I turn off the little eye for the background layer, a very cool lower third graphic. Yeah! 
and to make a file that we can use in Camtasia. So do a save as a PNG image. Not a JPEG, not a GIF, a PNG. GIMP will then let us merge the layers together when we save. And the defaults for the rest work fine here. With our image saved, let's jump back to Camtasia and we'll use this image by going to Callouts, Custom Callouts, and add New Custom Callout. We'll pick our image, give it a name, lower third, and then select it from the drop down list of available callouts. Nice. That's nice. And the really sweet part of using this custom callout approach, you can use it over and over again. Taking some time to create or having one professionally created for you is time and money well spent. So to wrap up, just a couple of quick comments about lower thirds, branding, and watermarks in general. First, if you look at most professionally produced videos, you'll rarely see a lower third throughout the entire length of the video. Why? Because it's distracting and quite frankly comes off looking like amateur night at a local karaoke bar. Pros use lower thirds for effect. And stay tuned for video number two in the Decrapifying Doyle series and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So Todd, thanks for watching, and remember, friends don't let friends make crappy videos.